Okay, we're going to demonstrate the features of the new PathPilot version of the Intern motor controller. So, I'm going to just go real briefly through and show what the, the buttons are, what the features are, the controls are. So, going through all of their, their various uh, screens and their various uh, options that they have, we'll come ac I came across a screen that was dedicated to this injection molding thing. So, uh, and the injection molding, by the way, is still completely functional. I didn't bother that at all. This is index and turn. And, uh, and spindle is on and off. doesn't require a lot of explanation. This, the, uh, all the interns have an internal spindle lock. So this is the spindle that's locked or it's unlocked. Forward and reverse requires no explanation. Enable and disable. Enable and disable generally means the drive is allowing the motor to freewheel. For setup, for inspection, that you need to be able to have the, the, the spindle freewheel. If you want to turn the spindle on and off, change directions, uh, lock and unlock the spindle, and, and maybe change the, the speed mode. Sp set speed is fairly simple. You just set the RPM that you want, and the controller runs the speed, runs the um, intern at that speed. Uh, it's important to keep in mind, however, that this, the RPM that you're selecting here is the spindle RPM, not the motor RPM. And all interns have two speed ranges, right? one of which is through a counter shaft, and uh, we call that back gear. Now, in the case of the Mega specifically, uh, if you have this speed set to 500, that's a spindle speed, then the, uh, the, the back gear ratio of the Mega is 12 to 1. So if you have this spindle speed set at 500, then you're, you're, you're commanding the motor to run at 6,000 RPM. So... Uh, that would be in back here. And then in direct drive, now it's 4 to 1. Controller stores the parameters of your particular system. And those parameters would be things like the motor's maximum RPM, the, the overall ratio of your back gear setting, which would be the low range, the overall ratio of the, of the direct drive. Uh, that's stored in the controller. You only have to put it in there once. It also wants to know things like what is the, what's the resolution of your, your encoder because the intern actually generates the, the, uh, st the square wave, which is what's known typically as a step, so the step of direction. So it needs to know what the uh, encoder count is because it has to send the appropriate number of, of pulses to get the speed where it's supposed to be. In turn mode, we have the drive is enabled and we have, we're calling for a little bit of RPM down here and then we click on the spindle and we are in manual mode, then it's gonna start, the motor's gonna start running. The auto speed mode takes the coordinates down here. It is a Y coordinate and a Z coordinate. Now you could hold, you could have a tool held in either the Y axis or the Z axis, so it's able to to uh, track either one separately. And uh, you can actually switch that back and forth under program under an, in the G code. You would set a surface peak per minute, and what the system will do is it the controller takes the coordinates from the CNC, and it uses them to calculate the correct RPM in order to maintain the surface feet per minute that you've specified. So as the tool gets closer to zero, the speed starts to come up and up and up in order to maintain the uh, surface feet that you want. Now this is, this is a primary use would be for facing. And uh, when, you're, when you're facing the speed, the uh, surface feet per minute really should be uniform but that requires a, a, a very, very large difference in RPM from, say, from if, you, if you're facing a four-inch piece of something, and uh, let's say aluminum, but that's typical. So you, you would start out at the outside pretty slow. By the time you get down toward the middle, that's really cranking up. So how do we make sure that we don't overspeed the motor? If we overspeed the motor, what's going to happen is the, the uh, drive is going to fall. Everything's going to stop. So one of the parameters that we feed into the controller is the maximum RPM that that motor is allowed to go. So it, it, ha having that knowledge, it now can make sure that the motor never runs faster than it's allowed to run, regardless of whether this, the surface feet per minute or the RPM is set too high or the, or the, the back gear is set wrong. It's going to restrict that motor to below the maximum at, at all times. Uh, a little slider here, that's metric. Metric or inch. Pretty self-explanatory. 
Over here we have acceleration, and acceleration is not something that you typically see on a slider. But for this particular uh, application, you'll want to be able to change the acceleration uh, very conveniently because you'll probably be changing it a lot. And the reason for that is uh, you have a, um, a not only an, index, an indexing operation is very, very slow. So the, the weight of the workpiece and, and how well you have it clamped in there and those kind of things and what you're actually doing to it is, is really almost irrelevant to acceleration. If you have a half inch piece of aluminum and you're going to take that out and it's in a collet and you're gonna you're done with that job you're gonna take that off and you're gonna put now a, an eight inch chuck on there and you're gonna put a piece of five inch diameter steel that's a whole different animal and uh you can't have the same acceleration for both of those just in cnc in general you want the maximum acceleration at all times so the question for something like um this uh, the mill turn operation the maximum acceleration is going to be relative to the, the the mass of the object that you're spinning and uh so we have we want to change this around and this is going to be kind of by feel at first for you but eventually you'll you'll know that all right i'm just i have a half inch piece of aluminum i'm going to crank this thing up to 50 that's pretty much where i run mine at and uh if you're putting something in there big and you just want to kind of keep an eye on it and let it let it kind of spin up slowly while you watch, then you want to keep that down. Or if it's something that's just it's, it's just going to fault the fault the system. If you have a really heavy piece and you have a relatively small motor, it's not going to be able to, to to maintain the acceleration that you've set. And once again, it's going to fall behind and it's going to fault. Everything's going to stop. This is the first time there's been a slider on screen for acceleration. So that's that's totally new. Below that is a little blue zero, and that's just part of a DRO. So that's gonna read out our RPM for us. And then these are the last two controls that, that, that we have to cover. The uh, path pilot insists that you be over here on main. When you're on main, you're, all your intern controls are hidden. So there's a couple of things we wanna know while these controls are hidden. And one of those is, what's the RPM? And the second thing is, whether it's on manual or program mode. So, what is manual or program mode? The controller is going to get its its information either from this screen or from a running program. There's a program button here that tells the controller whether the signals are coming from this manual plate right here with all these buttons or whether it's coming from the program. So that's basically what this button is for. And the reason that it's outside of these other controls is because when you're on the main, you can't see the other controls. And the reason that it's red is to draw your attention to that before you hit that cycle button because if it's set on manual mode, you've told the controller to get its information from those buttons. So it's not going to react to these macros. So uh, this is red for a reason. And as soon as you put it on program mode, now it's paying attention to your program and everything's going to be fine. So rather than have it do only that little, that little function, it also automatically sets you up for all these settings to be appropriate for program mode, for running with a, with a G-code. So, for example, you don't want the spindle locked and then start a G-code program. We're going to go over the set speed mode now. So, we're going, to, uh, we're going to have to be in turn mode, obviously, and we're going to put on auto speed. And uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to set a surface feet per minute that we want. And then we're going to be in manual mode so that we can control from here. And I'm going to turn the spindle on. And away it goes. It just starts running, and it's nice down here. Where you can see that it's this uh, our, our, this uh, DRO is duplicated. And uh, if we change the surface feet per minute, as you would expect, then the speed's going to change. The acceleration is hot and active at all times. So if you just suddenly change direction in the middle, it's just it's going to use the acceleration. So we'll burn it down. You can see it a little bit better. And that's the reason for the scope being there, because it's hard to tell when the motor is running how fast it's going. So you can see that if we run this up, run the acceleration up, it's going to it's gonna really boom. 
and uh, I think we're on 47 now. 50 is where I run mine, and that's pretty quick. So, uh, but that that would not that would not be a, a smart move to have it moving that fast if you had a big heavy uh, chuck and a big heavy workpiece in it. So, also if you switch back and forth from auto speed to set speed, it's also going to use the acceleration to change that back and forth. So the, ex the acceleration is is hot all the time, full time. Anytime that the speed changes, it has to go through this acceleration. So I'm going to put this back now, a little bit, and then we're going to go, right now we're on follow Z, which is the Z axis, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and jog the Z axis so that you can see the Z axis moving. And as it gets closer to zero, the motor starts to rev up, and that's what it's doing. It's actually changing the RPMs automatically to maintain whatever surface feet per minute that you've specified. Okay, the last thing we want to demonstrate is the, how the system reacts to an emergency stop. And while the motor is running, I'm going to force an e-stop by disconnecting the, e the alarm line on the drive. The drive for the intern is connected to the uh, PATH Pilot e-stop e system, the same as any other drive on, this, on the, uh, the mill is. So it's able to send the e-stop signal if something goes wrong. So path pilot right now is in the e stop as you can see it's a, the reset flashing it in turn has sent um, a signal over to the controller to inform the controller that it's in an e stop condition when you're in a, a mode where the motor is spinning the controller has has control of the motor so it has to be informed of the e stop because only it can stop the motor spinning at that point so as you saw the motor stopped spinning and it also put the uh, this the intern controls back to manual and the reason for that is so that we can take the RPM and the surface feet per minute set them back to zero and the purpose the reason to do that is a safety feature so that once the e-stop is cleared the the intern doesn't suddenly start up again unexpectedly so um, in the real world when you have it would have a crash or an e-stop on the system it may, may have nothing to do with the intern and once you find out what's wrong with the system and you clear it and, and you don't want to be uh, resetting the system and have this, the intern suddenly come on, it could have been running at 1,000 RPM. So any machine that, that can unexpectedly start uh, is, is, a, is a safety hazard. So uh, this, this arrangement forces the uh, system into manual so that we can keep the, shut the motor off and keep the motor off. So once you have the once you have the e-stop cleared, you'll go back to the to the uh, main screen, and then click cycle start again. So in the case of the intern, it's in manual mode. It's waiting there. So all you have to do is click it back into program mode, as we discussed earlier. All the settings that will be automatically set to appropriate um, positions for for running in a program mode, and then you can just go ahead and do your cycle start again. Uh, that's the last feature we're going to cover today, and uh, I may do some follow-on uh, videos that go more in-depth with some of, the, some of the features, but this is intended to be an overview, so uh, we're done.